Welcome. Today we're going to be learning about a statistical question. Now, a statistical question can be measured. It has variability. It can be measured on a dot plot or histogram or box plot or a variety of different graphs, to be honest. Uh, a, a statistical question, if I'm asking a wide variety of people, would have more than one answer. Or if I said, how many stars does the American flag has? That answer is 50, and that's only one answer. That is not a statistical question. So we are looking for statistical questions that have multiple answers and how to even ask a statistical question. So let's do that now. So this is write a statistical question you could ask to gather data on the topics in 7-8. Create a dot plot for 9. So we're going to do all that now. Uh, this one says the number of pencils classmates own. So how can we ask a question uh, gaining data on the number of pencils that classmates own? Well, choose the correct answer below. Number of pencils classmates own. Can I look at your pencils? Well, that is a question, but that's not a statistical question. How many pencils do you own? Maybe. Why do you collect pencils? Uh, no. Where are your pencils? No, but these are all questions, but there's only one that is a statistical question. And that is right here. How many pencils do you own? Because you could own 50, I could own three, another person could own seven. That's a number of different answers. So excellent, we got it. Hooray. Let's go into this one. We want to gain information of the heights of different stools. Okay, I don't know why we're doing this, but we are. The heights of different stools. So how can we make a statistical question on this? How many inches shorter was the stool last year? Nope. Where is each stool? Nope. These are questions, just not the kind we're going for. How many inches tall is each stool? Maybe. How tall can each stool get? No, it's not growing. <laughs> uh, so the statistical question is how many inches tall is each stool? And we got it. Yep, well done. Statistical questions. Now we're going to get into, I think, a dot plot. Yes, hooray, we are into the dot plot. So let's see here. Make a dot plot to display the number of data. Choose the correct answer below. Now really pay attention to the dot plot here. Here we go. Um, let me count up. Start with zero. Let's see if we can eliminate some of these. That's a good method. One, two, three, four, five, six zeros. Well, that eliminates A. We only have three zeros. No zeros here. That eliminates B. So let's just keep this down here. Uh, how many zeros did I say? Four? Yeah. So I think it's C right off the bat, unless I made a mistake. Wait, how many zeros? No, there's six zeros. Oh, what was I saying? I even said six zeros. So six zeros, that is right here. So we're thinking it's D, but let's just make sure. Let's count the number of ones. One, two, three, four. Four number ones. Nope. Maybe, but that doesn't have any um, zeros. Four number ones right here. I mean, it's D. We can clearly see. But uh, let me just go over a dot plot real quick. Um, the number of zeros here is six. The number of ones is four. The number of twos, we have three twos. We have one three. We have three fours. And we have three fives. Now, if we were to find the mean of this, we would add all of these numbers up and then divide by however many there are. So we would count them up like six plus four is um, 10, then 13, then 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. So we'd add them, all of them up and divide by 20 in this case to find the mean. You'll be doing this a lot in future lessons. So I'm kind of pre-teaching it for you. So zero plus zero plus zero, zero. Uh, plus one, plus one, plus one, plus one, plus two, plus two, plus two, plus, two, plus three, plus four, plus four, plus four, plus five, plus five, plus five. In parentheses, get that first and then divide by 20. Uh, you'll also be given questions such as this. How many um, students have uh, three or more pets? 
uh, three or more pets. So X is greater than or equal to three. That would be a closed circle. And and graphed um, greater than this way. Uh, no, did I do that right? No, yeah. This uh, this is mirrored, so it's weird. Anyway, um, how many? So how many students? How many students have three or more pets? So let's count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So seven students have three or more pets. So do you see the type of questions you'll be asked? Let's see if we can get it right. <laughs> that would have been awkward if it was wrong. I would have been like, oh, I got to do that again. Smash the keyboard. Okay, no, just kidding. Stop, focus. Uh, write a statistical question. You could ask to gather data on the topics in 7-8. Create a dot plot for number of cars your classmates own. Well, um, what kind of car do you guys have in sixth grade? Uh, do you guys, <laughs> no, you don't have cars, but I guess they think you do. Number of cars. Are these toy cars? Anyway, let's not get too into uh, figuring out what number of cars classmates own. Can I look at your cars? No, that's a question, but not what we're trying to get. How many cars do you own? Probably. Where are your cars? Nope. Definitely not in the garage. I got to clean the garage. Why do you collect cars? Nope. The only one that's a statistical question is how many cars do you own? There we go. And let's see the next one. Heights of different bottles. Okay. So we're trying to find the heights of different bottles. Maybe for like a business thing to, to see how many can fit in a box. We've been ordering food from Amazon because I guess we don't really want to go to the grocery store. And they all come in different boxes and packaging. So it's, it's interesting to see. But uh, heights of different bottles. How many inches shorter was the bottle last year? That's just not it. Where is the where is each bottle? No. How many inches tall is each bottle? Yeah, there we go. How tall can each bottle get? No, it doesn't grow like a tree. Come on. All right. Let's see. Did we get it right? I guess we did. Jenny asked her classmates how many pets they have. She collected the data shown here. Wait, is this what we just did? Well, that's weird. Let's see. All right, let's just check this one for pets. Zero, one, oh, so one, two, three, four, five zeros. So no, no. Yeah, there's five zeros here, so it's probably this one. Let's check the number of fives. Five, one here, one here. That's two. Yeah, two fives. Yeah, two fives. Let's go with that one since we already did this. I won't go into it too much further. Let's see what we got here. Write a statistical question you could ask to gather data on the topics. Create a dot plot for, for them. I don't know why it says nine. Uh, number of CDs classmates own. Do you guys own CDs? Like when I was a kid, we had cassettes. When my parents were kids, they had records and then eight tracks and then cassettes and then CDs and now everything's streaming. So um, I don't know if you guys have CDs, maybe you do. I do kind of miss going to the music store and getting that, but uh, let's get back to this. Number of CDs classmates own. Can I look at your CDs? <laughs> no, that does not get to the point here. So how many CDs do you own? Yeah, that's the statistical question right there. Where are your CDs? No, none of your business. <laughs> Why do you collect CDs? Because I like music. I don't know. So how many CDs do you own? That's what we're getting at. So we got to learn how to create the statistical question so that it can be measured. Heights of different stoves. Okay. Choose the correct answer below. How tall can each stove get? No. Where is each stove? How many inches tall? There it is. How many inches tall is each stove? So that's the one we're going for. And remember, try not to guess on these. I know you could probably guess and get all of these right, but you wouldn't really be understanding it. So hopefully, as we sit here, uh, maybe just have this playing on another window while you're doing your work. 
but hopefully you can get some nuggets of information out of it. Uh, write a statistical question. Uh, no, we'll see. Is this the pets one again? See, these uh, Envision does auto generate it like every time the question is different, but they have put this question on the same every single time. That must be a glitch. That's weird. Um, let's see. Should we get it wrong and see what? Oh, wow. Remember what I said about not guessing? <laughs> yeah. Let's see if we go similar question. All right. Number of marbles each uh, classmates own. So can I look at your marbles? No. They got to get a little more creative with asking these. Uh, how many marbles do you own? We'll go with that. And heights of different doors. Where is each door? How many inches shorter was the door? How tall can the door, each door get? How many inches tall is the door? Yep, there's the one. And then hopefully it's not the pet question again. That would be. Okay. It is the pet question. Did this guy, does this happen to you guys? Uh, one, two, three. Well, just forget what it is. We could be, how many siblings do you have, right? So we'll just pretend that that's the question. One, two, three, four, five. So five zeros there. Okay. Since we've done this question so many times, we'll just go with that. All right. So I guess they're not going to switch that format. Is the following question statistical? Explain. How many kinds of bread do grocery stores sell? Well, bread's been out a lot. Um, because of everyone hoarding stuff at the store. Uh, so you can't really find bread, but I've been using Amazon, uh, which Amazon's probably making so much money now, don't you guys think? Because we've been just getting packages from Amazon a lot. Um, we haven't really even left the house. We've been saving money on gas, but gas is really cheap now. So it's a good time to get gas, but I wore a glove. I'm not really into like, germs and stuff, but I wore a glove because they said you could transmit the coronavirus from a glove, uh, from the gas. So I wanted to be safe when I filled up the tank the other day. Anyway, how many kinds of bread do grocery stores sell? Is that statistical? Well, it says grocery stores. So it doesn't just say one sp specific store. So because of that, um, Kroger could sell like a hundred different types and Buskin Bakery could sell um, 75 types and Whole Foods could sell. So yeah, that is statistical. So yes, it is statistical. More than one response is possible. Yeah, that would be the one. Um, if it was not statistical, only one response would be possible. So let's check. Let's see if that's right. Yeah, we got it right. And let's just do a, well, I was going to do a similar question, but we won't worry about it. Okay, this one's a good one. This one is worth the price of watching this video, which was free. So that's good. Uh, what statistical question could you have asked or could have been asked to collect the data shown in the dot plot? So time spent writing. I have been working on some movie scripts, some screenplays, writing. Yeah, time spent writing. So one student spent zero minutes. Uh, two students spent 10 minutes, two students spent 20 minutes. So what statistical question could have been asked to collect the data below? How many minutes are in an hour? No. Did anybody in class spend time writing yesterday? Well, that's a yes or no question. That's not, um, did anybody in class spend time writing yesterday? How can you calculate the number of hours you spent writing yesterday? Maybe. No, no, that's not it. How many minutes did you spend writing yesterday? Yeah, that's a statistical question right there. Now we're coming up to, oh yeah, this one, the hours. If the data in the dot plot shows how many minutes students spend writing yesterday, how many hours in all did these students spend writing? So now we got to add them up. Now here's how you do it. Um, you could write in your notebook or I'm just pulling up my calculator. Now, so one student spent zero, so you have zero plus, and then 10 plus 10, so I'm just gonna put down 20, plus 
20 plus 20, so plus another 40. I kind of group them up like this, like 5 times 30. No, wait, is that 5? Yeah, 5 times 30, is, so that's 150 minutes. Plus 40, plus 40, plus 40, that's 120. Plus um, 350, so that's 150. Plus 260s, that's 120. So I got 600 minutes. Now, there are 60 minutes in an hour. So we have to do 600 divided by 60. 600 divided by 60, that is 10. Good. Okay. Now, keep in mind the total of this was 600. Okay, guys? Did this typical student from this group spend more or less than 30 minutes writing? A typical student from this group spent blank, let's see what it says, less or more than 30 minutes writing. Now, in order to do this, guys, we have to find the mean, which is the average. Now, in order to find the mean, we add all these up and divide by however many there are. Well, we've already at, um, added them all up, and we got 600, right? So now we just have to count to see how many um, – how many students were were questioned here, were surveyed? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. So, guys, to find the mean or the average, we do um, six hundred divided by eighteen. I think it was eighteen. Uh, wait a minute. Let's see, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. 600 divided by 18. Okay, so I got 33.33333, and one third, um, which is right about here. So the typical student from this group spent more than 30 minutes writing. And the reason I was confused was because the decimal came up. So you find that anyway, on this question, you would find the mean. And then if it, if the mean is more then that's what it would be like that. All right. And that does it for um, statistical questions and dot plots. We're going to be using these a lot. We're going to be finding uh, we're going to be finding the five boundary values of a box plot. We're going to be finding um, which is the minimum, the lower quartile or the first quartile, the median, the upper quartile or the third quartile, and the maximum. And then we're going to be finding the range, which is the maximum minus the minimum. And we're also going to be finding the um, – the interquartile range and the interquartile range is the upper quartile minus the lower quartile or the third quartile minus the first quartile. And also uh, we're going to be finding the mean absolute deviation. Now, I'm hoping we go back to school because I really want to teach you that in person, the mean absolute deviation. But if not, um, I will do my best to teach it to you on this and I'll be here to support you. I miss you guys. I hope you're doing well. Hope you enjoyed this. I, uh, and we, we have a zoom meeting. Um, we'll do some zoom meetings and everything else, but stay safe, happy, and healthy. And I will see you guys later. Bye-bye. My math. Okay. They're doing school now. They're doing their sight words. I cannot stop this thing. Please stop this. Guys, this. Um, this is awkward. Oh, wait. Something's happening. All right. Let's see if we can stop it.